Hello, Heart of the Lion Ministries. This is Evangelist Christian back with you again with another uh, Bible nugget. I want to encourage you um, as we're in the uh, fall uh, feasts and holidays of the of the scriptures, um, which I believe represent the uh, seventh stick candlestick menorah. Um, what is around the corner after we just had, I hope everyone had a blessed day of atonement, which is very, very uh, meaningful. For those who are Christians, knowing that Christ went to the cross uh, for our sins, is that was Wednesday, and right around the corner to finish up the fall holidays of the scriptures of Leviticus 23. Apologize for that. There is, uh, I'm by an airport, so I apologize for a little bit of noise. Um, but, um, the last seventh feast of Leviticus 26 that God has his people to keep as an everlasting ordinance is Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read that and just encourage you to try to keep that um, because um, it is a week long, but there's really only two days that God calls uh, to keep as a Sabbath. If you can, if you cannot do that, um, you know, that's between you and God. I'm not saying it's negative. Uh, God is not a task, you know, an evil taskmaster. He will try to work that out with you uh, in time as that works for you. But here we go in verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, 33, Leviticus 23, 33. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. So we just worshipped the Day of Atonement, which was on the tenth of the seventh month. So here we are, five days later, which is Monday, the 10th of this month, um, to, to start off and kick off the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 35, On the first day there shall be a holy convocation, which you shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall also have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. And as I'm finished with the, with the uh, part here where it's speaking about this feast, I will recap um, exactly everything, uh, what it means. And so, verse 37, These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So he's ending the chapter with all seven feasts, which I explained um, at a, another video on the Day of Atonement, that the first feast, which I'm not surprised is most important, but they're all important, is the Sabbath itself. And so, hopefully I'm not squinting too much, even though the sun's not directly in my face. I am outside for a nice little ambiance, little difference, um, you know, recording this. So, verse 37, These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything on its day besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, besides your gifts, beside all your vows, beside all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Verse 39. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it. Once again, let me back up. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. All these feasts, and I call it God's calendar, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh's, Yahuwah's calendar, all of these feasts have not gone away. It says you shall keep it as a statute forever in your generations. The only difference, like I explained last time, is in the Old Testament, people were looking forward to the cross and looking forward to the crucifixion. Now we're just only looking backward, but both was in faith. The Old Testament people didn't earn their salvation. It was all faith along the way, except they were keeping faith in a future Savior. We're keeping faith in a past Savior that is alive, actually, and resurrected at the right hand of the Father. 
So it says, verse 41, you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations and you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I have made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Out of the, uh, I am the Lord your God. So this is the reason, the real reason why this is being celebrated, and I'll explain and recap exactly what it is, is to remind Israel that they were in slavery and chains and bondage, being forced to work, and their chains were broken. Verse 44, So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. And it's very interesting, after the Sabbath, the Passover is the first major feast after that, and it ends on Feast of Tabernacles, which is a reminder of Passover, but everything that took place. That's why this is very powerful for New Testament believers to uh, be able to worship God uh, through this feast and holiday because it's a remembrance of whatever you're going through that God is going to break your chains. Even if it's on a myopic level individually or your church, if you're a pastor on a, a macro level, um, God is about setting the captive free for what is unjust. And this is a feast you definitely want to partake no matter what, but especially if you are experiencing some type of unfairness or injustice, because God broke Israel's chains and in the land of Goshen there was blessing. Very much a prophetic picture of the future which we're in now for God's people. There was Goshen and the blessings of God were falling on them but the plagues of God were falling on the rebellious, on those who took them captive as slaves. So what this holiday, biblical holiday and feast is, is on the 10th for seven days, on the 10th is a Sabbath, no work. And then the eighth day, which is I think the 17th or 18th, one week later, so not this Monday, but the following Monday, you're taking another Sabbath rest, if it is possible. And you are, since Christ is our sacrifice, we're no longer offering, you know, goats and rams. We are just having a holy convocation of praise and worship and applicable scriptures of what this feast meant when it was about the deliverance of Israel. So, and in between, you are allowed to work, and it's still an honorary sacrifice of worship and praise in between. It's just the first day and the eighth day are Sabbath. So, definitely, I would say, read uh, not only the whole chapter but definitely verses 33 through 34 and the leaves and the bows were to be decorated they were to to go outside because that's how they were camping from city to city that's how they were living to remember when God brought them out it's exactly what they were doing they were taking like tree uh, you know boughs uh, branches and decorating their booths that's what they were called to do now if you can't do that whole decoration um, you know that's between you and God uh, it's nice to be able to do that in the future. The main thing is the holy convocation, the honoring of God, the worship and praise and giving him thanks for breaking the chains of Israel because he's going to do the same for you as well. I hope that's a blessing and I pray people's chains are broken who are watching and listening to this right now in Yeshua's name. God bless you.